ancient Tamils from the time of their migration did not keep chronological records of their history. All available evidence of their past had been gathered from anthropological evidence and other artifacts left behind. Even at the height of Tamil civilization, detailed records were not kept. Most of the history has been reconstructed from stone inscriptions. Tamils who were inhabitants of Sri Lanka from the ancient times were always portrayed in the most unfavorable light possible. Mahavamsa and its continuation Kulavamsa provides adequate clues to a strong Tamil presence in the island of Sri Lanka. Evidence suggests that during the early centuries of Sri Lankan history, there was considerable harmony between the Sinhalese and Tamils. The earliest peoples to come to the Sri Lankan island were probably the Australoid jungle tribes who were found as well in South India from ancient times. They represented a stage of development which was essentially a nomadic hunter, food gatherer way of life. The remnants of these peoples are believed to be the Veda tribes of Sri Lanka. When and by whom Sri Lanka was first populated are matters enveloped in obscurity. Whether the earliest inhabitants were a people indigenous to the island, as some of the hill tribes to South India, or whether they were immigrants from outside must perhaps remain undecided. The Mahavamsa says that about the 6th century BC, there were the Yakkas confined to the center of the island, and the Nagas dominating the western and the northern parts. Sri Lanka is said to have been inhabited by Yakkas, Rakshasas and Nagas before the arrival of Vijaya and his men who colonized the island. Yakkas and Nagas were totemic tribes not supernatural beings. The Nagas of pre-Vijayan Lanka lived around Kelania and in the peninsula in the north. Naghadipa was the ancient name for the Jaffna Peninsula. It was known in Tamil as Nagahnadu or Nagahthivu. Tamil literature Manimeglai written in 2nd century has referred to a king of Naghadipa as he who rules over the Naga country without fear. Manimeglai also reflected the perception at the time that Nagahnadu was an autonomous administrative entity stretching across coastal districts, distinguished from the rest of the island also ruled intermittently by Tamil kings. In the 2nd century, Ptolemy, the Greek geographer, compiled a map of Lanka and his Nagdiboi is identical with Naghadipa, the northern kingdom. It is necessary to distinguish between the ancient Nagas of India and Sri Lanka from their northeastern namesakes, the latter were probably Turanian or Scythian immigrants from Central Asia belonging to the Mongolian race. There are many more references to Nagas in the Indian epics and literature as well as in the Sri Lankan chronicles. There are legendary, historical and archaeological evidence relating to the prehistoric period to suggest that Nagas had attained a certain level of culture. There have been various conjectures made as to the origin of the true Nagas. Some thought that they were so called because they were serpent worshippers. And others have surmised that the name was derived from the fact that their head covering was in the shape of a hydra-headed cobra. Though Naga in Sanskrit means cobra, Naga also means a tree, tree worship had been common since the earliest time, each clan, royal family and group had tree as their symbol and they worshipped it. Strabo, Greek geographer affords us a striking illustration of the Mahavamsa in calling the serpent worshippers of Sri Lanka. Since he states that in Phrygia and on the Hellespont the people who were styled of Eugenes or the serpent races actually attained an affinity with the snakes with whom they were popularly identified. The Yakkas were numerous and very powerful. 
and held themselves aloof and confined themselves to the mountain fastnesses of the north central region of Sri Lanka. Northern Nada Kingdom by the end of the 3rd century. It is not known for the present whether the Naga Vamsa kings continued to rule in the Northern Kingdom or became merged at some stage with a line of Tamil kings. After the demise or assimilation of the Nagas on the island, elements of their cobra connections were incorporated in Buddhism as well. Etched on the shoulder portion of a broken black and red where could be a name of a person with an N at the end. A surprise find of a Prakrit name gives way to explore the possible existence of trade links between Kiladi and Sri Lanka. Evidence suggests that during the early centuries of Sri Lankan history there was considerable harmony between the Sinhala people and Tamils.
initially under Raj Raja Dad. The British rule in Sri Lanka began in 1815, which was preceded by the invasion of the Portuguese, the Dutch, the Danes, and the French. The British quickly began a reform process. Experiments with tea as a plantation crop were immediately successful, and tea spread along the upper and lower slopes of the hill country. About the same time, rubber and coconuts also were cultivated as plantation crops. In the mid 1830s, the British began to experiment with a variety of plantation crops in Sri Lanka using many of the technological innovations developed earlier from their experience in Jamaica. When slavery was abolished in the West Indies and coffee production there declined, Sri Lankan coffee exports soared, filling the gap in the world market. The coffee plantation system faced a serious labor shortage. The low wages paid to hired workers failed to attract the Kandia peasant. To compensate for this scarcity of native workers, an inexpensive and almost inexhaustible supply of labor was found among the Tamils in southern India. They were recruited for the coffee harvesting season and migrated to and from Sri Lanka, often amid great hardships. By the end of the century, the production on the island had risen enormously the tea estates needed a completely different type of labor force than had been required during the coffee era tea was harvested throughout the year and required a permanent labor force waves of indian tamil immigrants settled on the estates and eventually became a large and permanent underclass that endured abominable working conditions and squalid housing The Tamil laborers emigrated to Sri Lanka from India not as individuals but as part of family units or groups of interrelated families. Thus, they tended to maintain their native cultural patterns on the estates where they settled. Although the Indian Tamils spoke the same language as the early Sri Lankan Tamils, were Hindus and traced their cultural origins to southern India. they considered themselves to be culturally distinct from the early sri lankan tamils britain ruled sri lanka then called ceylon from 1815 to 1948 the british established huge cash crop plantations on the island first of coffee and later of rubber and tea Colonial officials brought in approximately a million Tamil speakers from India to work as plantation laborers. The British also established schools in the northern Tamil majority part of the colony and preferentially appointed Tamils to bureaucratic positions angering the Sinhalese majority. This was a common divide and rule tactic in European colonies. that had troubling results in the post-colonial era in places such as Rwanda and Sudan. 
the British granted Sri Lanka independence in 1948. After independence, debate about the status of the Indian Tamils continued. But three pieces of legislation, the Ceylon Citizenship Act of 1948, the Indian and Pakistani Residence Act No. 3 of 1948, and the Ceylon Parliamentary Elections Amendment Act No. 48 of 1949, all but disenfranchised the Tamil people of Sri Lanka. The Sinhala majority immediately began to pass laws that discriminated against Tamils, particularly the Indian Tamils brought to the island by the British. They made Sinhala the official language, driving Tamils out of the civil service. At the most basic level, the conflict arose from the ethnic tension between Sinhala people and Tamil citizens. In reality, though, the causes were much more complex and arose in large part because of Sri Lanka's colonial history. The Ceylon Citizenship Act of 1948 effectively barred Indian Tamils from holding citizenship. After decades of increasing